Wow, it sure has been a while since I posted any videos on YouTube, hasn't it? But I'm super glad to be back. How's it going, everyone? Ryan here. Yes, it's me, the one, the only. And I stand before you today to give you my movie review of the new Stephen King adaptation known as It. Before I go into my review of the film, let me just say that the reason why this review came out so freaking late after the film's release is because my area has been very badly hit by Hurricane Irma over the weekend the film came out. And it has been such a rough time for me and my family having to go and recover from the storm. Please don't worry though, we are all perfectly fine and all of our houses are perfectly intact. I just needed you all to know what took me so long to get this video done. It took me forever to properly be able to make my review. Fortunately though, I did have the opportunity of seeing the film a couple days before the storm hit my area and have been keeping this film fresh in my mind ever since. Now, with all that said and done, on to the review! So to give you some background, when I first heard that they were making a new IT movie, I had no idea what to think of it. At the time, I thought IT was going to be a remake of the 1990 miniseries. And I was like, why? Isn't the 1990 miniseries, or film, if you want to call it that, already a beloved classic? I wonder what would make them want to redo the story. Then I started looking up what people thought of the 1990s miniseries recently. Most people say nowadays that the miniseries has held up terribly. So I saw most of the clips from the 1990s miniseries to see what made people so afraid of Pennywise the Dancing Clown to begin with. And yeah, I agree with what people say nowadays. They were right. The miniseries has held up terribly. So terribly, in fact, that I actually questioned myself, was it ever even good to begin with? You see, the reason why I thought the miniseries was a classic before is because of how many people bring it up when they talk about movies that scare them the most. I have no idea what those people saw, but from what I've seen, it looks like the most boring, cheesy piece of shit that I have ever seen that is terribly acted, has some of the worst dialogue that I've ever heard, and isn't even scary in the slightest, aside from maybe a couple scenes. And even those scenes are less scary now than they were back then. Why exactly? Because the new film adaptation, IT, does not only amplify the horror of all those creepy scenes from the miniseries, but it is very well made, very well acted, has an excellent script, great coming of age storytelling, a lot of characters that are very well fleshed out, and they allow you to feel what each of them are going throughout the film. Some definitely shine a lot better than others, of course. And most importantly, it is actually pretty damn scary. Yeah. There are so many times throughout the film where I was on the edge of my seat and times where I jumped out of my seat because of how shocked I was at how far the film went. Ever since I saw the first teaser for the film, I wasn't that impressed at first. I just thought it looked like a scary film and nothing really more about it. But the more I watched that teaser and the more I saw from the film, I just got more and more excited for it. And it did not disappoint me one bit. It's not perfect, but it's a damn great film, and it's pretty damn scary. Aside from how scary and messed up the film can be, the kids are very likable too. All of them share very good chemistry with one another, and the performances from each of the kids in the Losers Club are so good. They act like real kids would act like when they are around each other. Trying to make fun of each other, curse behind parents when they feel like it even though they have no idea what they're saying. They feel like genuine kids that are put in a very terrible situation of a demonic clown trying to kill them all. Kids are also the most determined people on the planet, and the characters of the Losers Club definitely show that throughout the film. These kids feel so real in this film. Child performances in films, as well as TV shows, have been absolutely killing it lately, and I hope that trend continues for years to come. It's such a delight seeing people so young putting their all into films and impress the hell out of all of us every single time. Take notes, Jake Lloyd. Are you an angel? An angel. Sandstorms are very, very dangerous. It wasn't my fault, really. It's working! It's working! You're a 
Jedi too? Pleased to meet you. R2, get us off this autopilot. It's gonna get us both killed. I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. We hit R2. Ah! Oops, this is not good. Now this is pod racing. Uh... Oh wait, he's an adult now. Never mind. I'm sure he's learned his lesson. Anyway, when it comes to the Losers Club, my personal favorites of the Losers Club would easily have to be Ben, Eddie, Richie, Bill, and my personal favorite, Beverly. All of them were excellent. Stanley and Mike, on the other hand, eh, that's a different story. Jeremy Ray Taylor, as Ben, was so good in this film, and I really felt for his character. He got bullied the worst out of everyone in the Losers Club, and I loved how everyone in the Losers Club backed him up throughout the film, and all he went through. I also loved the cute relationship he had with Beverly as well. He was great! Jack Dylan Grazer's Eddie was excellent as well. He was so much fun to watch, and I love how much personality his character had, and his dynamic in the Losers Club. I had a lot of fun with him, and he was a great addition to the film as well. Finn Wolfhard as Richie was awesome! I loved him so much in this film. He is for sure a standout in the Losers Club. Finn has given great performances before, especially in Stranger Things, and this is no exception. His character is also a lot different from his character in Stranger Things as well. In Stranger Things, he played Mike, who's an extremely outgoing and caring person. Here, he's a complete trash mouth. He talks shit throughout the entire film, and I fucking loved everything he said. He was so funny, but he also had a lot of vulnerability to his character as well. Not to mention some badass moments, especially towards the end. He really stole the show every time he was on screen. He was just fantastic. And I can't wait to see more of what Finn Wolfhard does in the future. Because he's had an excellent start. Jaden Lieberher as Bill was excellent. I loved his character and I easily related and felt for him the most of the entire Losers Club. Bill really drove the movie for me. Him trying to find his brother that he hasn't seen in over a year and feels so guilty of his disappearance. He's an extremely socially awkward and relatable person, and I loved how much development they gave his character throughout the film. And his chemistry with Beverly was excellent. I loved seeing them two on screen together. I'm really curious on who Beverly chooses to stay with in the sequel though, Ben or Bill? Well, guess I'll have to wait and see. Speaking of which, let's talk about Sophia Lillis as Beverly. She was so good. She gave such an amazing performance, and I loved her character so much, and I felt so bad for what she went throughout the film. She is quite possibly the most fleshed out of all the members of the Losers Club, because what she went throughout most of her life has scarred her so much, and what she goes throughout the film really makes her all the more sympathetic. I don't want to spoil anything, but she has been through some really fucked up shit to the point where she's been given an awful reputation for what she went through. It's really sad, which is why I feel like her with the Losers Club was so charming because those were the only people who've grown to care for her and were the only people who are actually her friends. I also think that Sophia Lillis easily gives the best performance of all these kids in the Losers Club, even though all of them were excellent. Almost everyone in the Losers Club really had their time to shine, and I cannot wait to see how they are when they become adults, and see what the child actors in this film do in the future. They have such bright futures ahead of them. Now, although all of the child performances are great, and almost every member of the Losers Club is fantastic, I don't think that either of them give the best performance of the entire film. Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise the Dancing Clown gives the best performance of the entire film. Holy shit! His performance was phenomenal! I love this Pennywise. No disrespect to Tim Curry though, since I'm sure he gave it his all as Pennywise and was the best part of that entire miniseries, but from all the scenes I've seen him in, never once did I find him scary or even remotely creepy. Most of the time he's just extremely over the top and trying to be so funny to the point where it comes off as completely distracting. Tim Curry gave a good performance for what he was given, but he was not 
a good Pennywise. And I will never understand why people ever found him scary, aside from him maybe showing off his sharp teeth and glowy eyes. That's all I can say about Tim Curry being scary. I don't even know if I can call it that. Skarsgård, on the other hand, is fucking terrifying. He has an incredible design. His voice is so off-putting and disturbing. He has such a creepy face, and you can tell throughout all of his makeup what Pennywise is trying to express. You can tell when he's trying to be nice and cute to lure kids in. You can tell when he's about to do something horrible or murderously kill someone. Hell, he's even legitimately funny at times, but never to the point where he stops being scary or that it becomes distracting like Tim Curry did. Even when he's trying to be funny and starts mocking the kids or doing something silly, he's still pretty damn creepy. Pennywise is such an amazing villain in this film, and I cannot wait to see what he does in chapter two. Skarsgård as Pennywise won me over the moment he showed up on screen. He completely embodied the character and what made people so afraid of him to begin with. Did I even mention how many scary moments this film has? There are so many scenes that I can think of. The opening scene, the projector scene, almost every single scene in Beverly's house, the basement scene, almost every scene in the abandoned house, the final act, I can go on. It's full of scary moments like these. And if you think you've seen all of them in the trailers, you have another thing coming because there's so much more than what there was in the trailers. Even certain scenes that were in the trailers are so much more scary when watching the film because of how much more they've added to each scene. It does a damn good job at making you creeped out or scared with almost every scene and is even more engaging due to how well fleshed out most of the characters of the Losers Club are, and how the movie allows you to care for them so much. I love it when horror movies do this, because it makes the film work as a whole. Now, even though there are so many things that I legitimately loved about it, I did have a few problems with the film. None of them were deal breakers to me, but some were very noticeable and are worth mentioning. First off, while I absolutely loved the Losers Club as a whole, not all the members won me over though. Mike and Stanley in particular, or as I like to call them, Mike Stanley Trace. Mike Stan. <laughs> Mike. Stan. Lee. Mike Stanley. <laughs> the third. They were the only members of the Losers Club that I found completely unnecessary. Chosen Jacobs and Wyatt Olaf, those some weird ass names, both give very solid performances. They even had their standout moments. And Mike certainly does things that contribute to the Losers Club's goal in the film. But the film really left both characters way behind compared to how fleshed out all the other members of the Losers Club are and how much those characters add to the film. It really hurt their characters so much to the point where if you would have taken them both out of the movie, not a goddamn thing would have changed story-wise. The dancing film. Maybe in the book, they played a more important role, but here, I was so disappointed by how pointless both of them were. At the worst though, they are just pointless. So I never really made a big deal about it in the film. Speaking of unnecessary characters though, the bullies in this film are extremely one-dimensional as well, which is exactly what I feared going into this film. I really hate it when movies I see use bullies just to be evil, cliched characters with basically nothing else to offer to their character. Even in films I love, it happens quite often, and it's no exception here. To this film's credit, however, it at least tried to flesh out one of the bullies. But even then, not only does it happen way too late into the film, but what he does throughout the film is borderline psychopath. To the point where he doesn't even feel like a bully. The sick shit he does in this film would never be something I'd see a bully doing. Maybe what they were going for 
Was him being brainwashed by Pennywise and attempting him to do psychotic things, but it just did not work for me. I also thought the adults were way too sidelined as well. I know what they were going for with the adults. They were supposed to have no idea what was going on except for the kids in the Losers Club and act all weird and creepy as hell. But we never actually get to see why they are like that. Another problem I had with the film was the CGI. I'm sure it had a low budget so there was only so much they could do to animate Pennywise when he transforms. But it's very hit and miss when it comes to the CGI. Some of it actually looks pretty damn good and real, while other times some of it looks pretty fake. And when it looks pretty fake, it's pretty damn noticeable, and it can be really distracting at times. Hopefully though, since this movie was a ginormous hit at the box office, there is no doubt in my mind that Chapter 2 is going to look even better when it comes to the CGI. One more thing that kinda bothered me with the film is that while I did find it very scary, suspenseful, and engaging throughout, I wasn't nearly as scared as I would have wanted to be. There were certainly a lot of moments where I jumped out of my seat and my heart was pounding, don't get me wrong, but that only happened like every once in a while. And it never came to the point where I was constantly fearing for the character's lives. That's probably because more realistic horror tends to scare me a lot more than fictional horror. A small film that came out last year called Don't Breathe. Listen to me, scared the living shit out of me. Tell me about it, Kevin Hart. Don't Breathe scared the fucking shit out of me. To the point where I was constantly having a heart attack with every moment the film was on. Fearing so much for the characters. I was really hoping that it would have given me that same unnerving experience that I've had with that film. But it only made my heart pound so much when it came to the scares. I don't recommend going into this film thinking that it will be one of the scariest films you will ever see like I did. But it is still pretty damn scary nonetheless. Especially if you're afraid of clowns like a lot of people I know are. So although I do have quite a few problems with the film, it is still a pretty damn awesome flick. Go see it as soon as you can. It has plenty of great scares. It is a lot of fun to watch. The performances are amazing. Most of the characters in the Losers Club are very likable and fleshed out. It has an excellent story with a lot of heart. It has one of the best villains I have ever seen in a horror movie. I love this movie and I just cannot wait to see this awesome film again and again. If you are into horror movies, want to watch something for Halloween aside from Stranger Things Season 2, which I'm dying to see by the way, or even just want to have a good time watching a great film, look no further than IT. Once again, this is Ryan, signing off.